during these crucial times. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Hawk coming to you live. It's Friday night, 11 8, 2013, the year of the snake. Well, let me tell you what the Lord Jesus gave you power and dominion to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And I'm going to tell you what, you better use your eyeballs and get your glasses on and your spyglass, your binoculars or whatever. Because there's a whole lot of sons of guns that are starting to look like scorpions and serpents to me. And I will tell you this, there's a lot of people, I've been talking to a lot of people who now can see it. I listened to Alex Jones all afternoon. He now basically said, hey, I've been in denial too, I can now see this. It's all a coming. Well, you remember where the hawk started you out with in 2004 and 2005, and he told you this. Ladies and gentlemen, sharpen your K-bars. Get your ammunition ready. Get your magazines all loaded. Get your boots by the door. Get ready to go because these people, these evil tares, these scum, these Luciferian scum and their minions are still coming. And what did I tell you back in 2004, 2005? They're coming to grab you, take your family, and to eat your liver. And that's what they want to do. They want to make a blood sacrifice to their little G-God, Lucifer. And that is what they're coming to do. They're coming for you. But let me tell you what. This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters, and he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness, and for his name's sake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, and thou preparest a table for me. In the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And let me do another psalm here really quickly, because I'm telling you, people are starting to have some fear. But the trick is, is that if you have not done it, get down on your knees, repent of your sins, Ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and to be your Savior, and he will give you and fill you up and give you all of the glory of him, and you'll be able to drink some cool water. You'll be able to get the good things that he is bringing to you, and you'll be strong, and you will not fear. The obedience to the Lord is the way to go. It is just, I just cannot emphasize that. Those people are fearing, are not believing in Jesus. They're not believing in our Father in heaven. And they are not prepared at all either. Because we do have the parable of the lamps. And you have to be ready. You have to be understanding of what's going on. And you have to have ears to hear and eyes to see. And if you pay attention to the watchman, and believe me, I've tried to be the best watchman I possibly could be. So here right now, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. This truth shall be thy shield and buckler, and thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by the night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee, only with thine eyes." Shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked? Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. 
and thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name, and he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him, and with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Psalm 91. Now let me just turn over here just for a second, and let me just say what the Lord is to say once again. And I'm just going to tell you what I feel that he's leading me to do, because I pray, Lord, put the words in my mouth and give me the scriptures. Well, apparently is the scriptures right here. Let me tell you. And here it is. Matthew 24. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning, the beginning of sorrows, and then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he, verse 13, Matthew 24, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come, and when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains, and let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes, and woe unto them that are with child of them that give suck in those days. But pray ye, pray ye, that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. To this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. Then if any man say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore? If they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn that they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with the power and great glories. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So what do we do? 
We need to stick with Lord Jesus and our Father in heaven. And then, shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Ladies and gentlemen, you could also go to Matthew 13 and you could read what I would say is going to happen to these evil people, these tares, you know. And, you know, it's just incredible, you know, in terms of uh, uh, what is going to happen. And if you go to Matthew 13 and you go to verse 37, I like to start about right there. But here is what you've got going for you, you tares. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. So shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing the gnashing of teeth. And then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You evil suckers, you Lucy sons of a bucks, you think you're going to come for America? You think you're going to come for the rest of the world? You're going to try to enslave us? You may, in fact, this very coming week, in the great X2 drill, you may, in fact, just sort of, oh, make it. Oh, it sort of it did happen already. It sort of did go down, and there was a cyber attack. And then you see, we're told, how many times have we been told that there's a giant cyber attack coming? Giant cyber attack, giant cyber attack. And then we're told, who is perpetrator of the greatest cyber attacks on the planet? It's the Red Chinese. And, of course, the Americans who, you know, in the NSA could do stuck that with the Israelis. But the Red Chinese are the biggest cyber attack people on the planet right now. Well, then, in the midst of this, where we're simulating Grid X2, which basically is a complete shutdown of the grid due to either a uh, an attack, say, like an EMP or a cyber attack, and then who do we now have helping us? Chinese troops will have boots on the ground in Hawaii on Tuesday. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, a story that's been put up here. I think it's uh, Steve put the story up there. At, uh, it's from the uh, 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 written by somebody called Judy McLeod. And he's got it up at stevequail.com. You can see it, I believe, right now on his front page. So, Aloha, Hawaiians, if you think you're our soldiers... If you think uh, what you think are soldiers from the Communist People's Republic of China wandering about about your neck of the woods Tuesday through Thursday next week, your imagination is not playing tricks on you. 
For the first time in history, the U.S. Army will host the Communist People's Republic of China's Army on American soil November 12th through the 14th, 2013. Oh, but don't worry. While Chinese soldiers will have boots on the ground in Hawaii, they're only really simulating humanitarian assistance, disaster relief. Well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, as I've been telling you for months now, there's been red Chinese military coming into Wright Patterson Air Force Base near Dayton, Ohio. We've talked to you about how they've landed, how they were greeted, and how they were feeded by the base commander and all the top brass at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and how then some of them were put on helicopters and other light aircraft and taken to Chicago, taken to Indiana, taken other places in Ohio and even to Kansas City, Missouri. And then I'll tell you what, just before I came on, I got a report uh, from Paul out of Colorado saying that uh, by Fort Collins that they saw flying very low a red Chinese, basically what would be the equivalent of like a 737 size aircraft with the red Chinese symbol on the back of it flying low over Fort Collins. Where is it going to land? And the New York Times just never, uh, you know, mentioned in their story about the drill, the Grid X2, massive November 13, 14 drill. They wrote the story on August 16th, but they never mentioned the participation of the Red Chinese Army. And then, oh, we've got our Pacific Commander, Samuel Locklear, U.S. Military PATCOM, Samuel Locklear said Tuesday, that a joint humanitarian assistance and disaster relief exercise to be held this month helps improve the relationship between the United States and China. That's according to Xinhua Agency's uh, press, November the 6th, 2013. Locklear told a news briefing that the Pacific Command's Army Component Commander in Hawaii has been looking forward to the November 12th to 14th exercises for some time as the Army will host the People's Liberation Army soldiers of China to train together in a field environment, simulating humanitarian assistance and disaster relief to a fictional third country. Summing up his expectations for the joint exercise, Locklear said both militaries can learn something in the disaster management and prepare better prepare tomorrow than yesterday. In relationship to our ability to do this with our Chinese counterparts, he said, this is the kind of exercise that gives us a place to start and to get into the rhythm of understanding and trusting each other. Yeah, as you're getting ready to come and take the guns from the American people after you shut the grid down in some kind of U.N. Luciferian scumbag deal. Well, let me tell you something, Locklear, Locklear, General Admiral Ale, whatever, whoever the heck you are. If you're Admiral, you're General, I don't care. The Red Chinese also put in their newspapers there. Locklear, Pacific Commander, Locklear, Pacific Command, Locklear. The Red Chinese published last week in their newspapers the attack plan to hit the United States of America, to hit the United States with nuclear weapons, and we even published a map of where they thought the radiation clouds were going to go. And then you also know that they're the biggest, the largest and biggest cyber attack artists and identity thieves and international secret stealing and all kind of technology stealing. Every single thing in their high-tech arsenal has come from the United States. They've stolen all the best stuff, or were given it by traitorous, Luciferian, scumbag, communist presidents, or military leaders, or intelligence agents. Pacific Commander Locklear, Sammy Locklear, hey, listen, Sammy, you had a red Chinese sub pop up of uh, L.A. a couple years ago. And everybody says, oh, well, they got, you know, 70 subs, but most of them are diesel. They, well, that's because they're quiet. And they also have the rubber hole on the ship that allowed them to come right up in the big Pacific, the big PACCOM naval exercise a few years back. 
when old trader, what was his name, the old admiral back then, who was talking the same crap as you are, Locklear, hands across the water, and we got to be touchy-feely with the red Chinese because they own our debt now. No ticky, no laundry. Let me tell you something. These guys are the enemy. They have taken all our jobs. They've hollowed out our country because traitorous people at the top of the United States in the Illuminati Luciferian community, the banks and their politician minions have given it all to the red Chinese. And now you want to go hands across the water and train and you want to let red Chinese ships and planes come into the Hawaiian Islands. You want to give them access to there. And do you not think there's going to be stay behind and sneaky peats come in and put their bugs, put their transmitters, put their, you know, I spy stuff everywhere in the Hawaiian Islands? You remember that sub came right up in front of the old flagship, the old PACCOM naval exercise, the bigger, biggest one that had ever been, the old sink pack deal back a few years ago and they popped up with a rubber hull and you couldn't even detect it and people say well hawk by golly we've got this no you guys sammy locklear you guys have turned off the sonars you've turned off the sonars so you don't hurt the whales and then you've gotten rid under the joker tut has ordered that the p3 orions don't go on the you know on the coastlines anymore and the coast guard's got to trim their sails and come in because there's not enough money for gasoline or diesel for the ships. And, oh, you want to do this, you want help. And, oh, they've got the money and they hold our debt, so we need to be kind to them. No, we need to shove it up there. You know what? And you need to put our Navy over on their land. You say, if you're going to have this here, then we reserve the right to come in and take our military inside Red China right now. We need to put our subs on their coastline, just like theirs are here. We need to launch a missile on their coastline to show them what we can do. Maybe there's another atoll out there that we can show them what one of them big boys looks like. Or maybe we should bring a TR-3B or a TR-4 and let them come in and rain the fire down from heaven. Let them rain. Let them rain the dadgum particle beam weapons and lay waste to one of their you know, new cities that doesn't have money in it so far, you know, just to show them what the heck that the United States can do. But, oh, no, you traitors, Locklear, the Joker, Tut, all oh, you people, you want to give it all up to them. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Now, we also have reported today, and this is from uh, old Big D. Big D gave this report. He had a friend that said that in the San Juan Islands, near the, the Juan de Fuca Strait there, off the coast of Washington. Do you remember we had the the uh, information that Steve had up on his alert section from somebody who said that their relative was in the military and they were being warned. They were doing drills in Utah and warning that they hoped that nobody from their group was in western Washington State, and we didn't know why or what's going on. And then here we have San Juan Islands today, a report, and we need further verification this. Anybody in the San Juans or has been up there or who can go up there tomorrow, find out what's going on and see if this is, you know, 100% true or what the story really is, because we don't know at this point. But I did get the report today from old Big D, and he said, in the San Juan Islands in the Juan de Fuca Strait area. They were told, his friend was told there'd be no phones or internet for a couple of weeks. And he also said, and they, they didn't say why or anything like that, but they also said that there were ships seemed to be like waiting off the coast of the San Juan Islands. And they didn't mention what, who they were commercial ships or whatever, but for some reason a lot of ships are waiting off the islands. Is there going to be a false flag nuke that goes off there that maybe then causes Seattle to go into the water, uh, you know, which would make a lot much bigger, I guess, harbor or whatever, if they just blow that whole section of the western, you know, uh, Washington state off there. I guess then the red Chinese could come in and affect their 
uh, their version of the X invasion plan that the Nazis had, where you come in from the two corners at the top, the two corners at the bottom, and you can even come up straight up the gulf and split the middle, you see. Or maybe you blow the lakes into the Mississippi River and you let the river be blown with nuclear weapons. Remember like Bin Laden had in his little map, the little drawing where they had the nuclear weapons going boom, boom, boom in various places. And then we've had all of the information and all the prophecies and predictions that in the future the Mississippi River might be 50 or 100 miles wide and the Great Lakes would drain into the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this thing is getting real close, real close. We're getting real close to the cut in time, and therefore I urge you, get your K-Bar knife and sharpen it, or get your sharp knife from Sharp Saddles. That's already sharp, and you get it ready to go. You get your katana sword. You get you your machetes. You get all that stuff. You get your firearms ready to go. You better clean them, and you better load all your magazines. You better have them ready to go. How much ammunition do you need? How much can you afford? How much food do you have? How much can you afford? And if you don't have any money, get one extra can of Chunky Soup because you're going to need it. Get one extra can of Progresso Soup or Chili with Beans or something. Spaghetti, ravioli, whatever it might be. Cans of tuna salad. If you can just afford two more cans of tuna, then buy it. If you can't afford a firearm, then see if your grandfather or your great uncle or somebody can loan you one. If you can't afford that, then go up and see if you can get a used machete from somebody or a, or a machete at a, at a, uh, a surplus store or something. You get a Louisville Slugger ball bat or one of them aluminum uh, Bing Bong Jap bats. You get one of those, and you get you a garbage can lid, and you can fight that way or some kind of way. You can get you just a good axe handle, a bow staff, whatever it might be. But I'm going to tell you what. You'd better get ready, and you better be ready to be the minute man or the minute woman. Because we do not know when this thing is going to break. But they are going to come, and they're going to come hard at the right point in time. And when they do that, when they do that, let me read this to you right here. Let me read this to you right here. This is called Martial Law Playbook Possibilities. Here's a short version, okay? And this was from a magazine called The uh, Survivalist. The Survivalist. And uh, I just picked this up one day. It was very interesting. Here's a short version of how it will play out by category. Metropolitan big cities. Complete lockdown. And I'll come back to this in a minute. After the break. Be right back, ladies and gentlemen. With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, Enerhealth Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10 to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast at third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Welcome 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Hawk on Survive to Thrive. It's Friday night, live show, 11-8-2013. And if you'd like to get a 10% discount off of any of the inner, inner food products, uh, any of the herbal tinctures, any of the items that Inner Health Botanicals uh, provides or makes, except for the Berkey water filter, which is already discounted, you can get an additional 10% off if when you call them at 866-762-9238, 866-762-9238, you want to get a 40-day, 40-night pail, you want to get some herbal tinctures, you want to get the bladder uh, seaweed that will help you to uh, overcome the radiation problems that we're already starting to get. And incidentally, today, I talked to Steve Quayle. He said that they're getting high radiation measurements and levels much higher than what the background has been in Montana, and that's been in the last day or so. This Fukushima is coming at us. It's in the wind. It is coming all over the United States, all the way into the center part of the United States. I've seen things where Dutch Sins and others have measured the uh, radiation high levels in St. Louis area, a whole lot of places. So you get an additional 10% off if you say Hawk sent you, H-A-W-K, Hawk, and that's 866-762-9238. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to get gold or silver and get it quickly, because Steve always has it on hand or he has some allocated at the at the main dealerships for him at a moment's notice, you call 406-586-4840. Get your food first. Get your water purification first. Get your firearm and ammo. You know, but then put the rest you got into gold and silver so that you'll have something left. You call Steve, 406-586-4840, or you can email Steve Quayle. You can go Steve777 at stevequayle.com. That's Q-U-A-Y-L-E. Steve77 at stevequayle.com. Put in your subject line, want metals or precious metals or whatever. And you give Steve the best time to call you, your name, best time to call you, and a, and a place to call, and he'll get back with you. And he can lock you in on a weekend price before this starts. stuff starts to go up. And when it does, it's going to go up overnight. You won't be able to get any of it. And then who's got it? Who's been buying thousands of tons of it over the last few years? Who? The Red Chinese. And what are they doing? They're coming. I also heard just as a little tidbit today, the VLF, the VLF signals, and there's very few people that can really get down real low to understand what's going on with these because a lot of the radios today don't even cover it. But the VLF is extremely active at 16, 18, 24, 32, and 54 kilohertz. U.S. Is generally has been in the years past at 24 and 32. You have the Russians probably sitting there in the uh, teens. You know, it used to be like at a 14, but I guarantee you, Sammy Locklear, Pack Commander Sammy Locklear, little Sammy. You got the Red Chinese communicating the heck out of themselves with their subs. They got subs you don't even know about because you don't have your sonar out. You don't have your P3 Orions out. You do not have anything. And then you're inviting them in. And every time you invite them in, then their little black boxes and their antenna, their spy ships, everything, sitting off the coast of Hawaii for weeks now. And where are they going to sit? What are they going to do? They're going to listen to your traffic. They're going to go into your business. They're going to go and look at your Kauai missile defense line there. And then at the same time when they did that, they're telling you in the papers that they're going to attack the United States. The Russians are holding drills, missile drills, all over their territory. They're telling people, hey, do not go against Iran. Do not go against Syria, or we'll light you up. The Russians also have got their subs in the Gulf of Mexico, and you couldn't even find them, Locklear. Locklear, you guys couldn't find a Russian sub for over a month in the Gulf of Mexico. 
and then you've turned off the space fence. The Joker Ted has ordered you to turn the space fence off. And you probably turn Eglin C6 off as well, haven't you? So you can't even see or detect anything from above. Oh, yes. Just wonderful. And then we got Red Chinese coming in to ride Pat. Me and Sturm uh, ferried around into various locations. And then now we got a, a 737-style plane or size plane flew over Fort Collins flying low with the Red Chinese emblem. Well, I wish somebody would have got that out of the way and got that out of the road. Oh, no. Why don't you let them come on in? Come on in and bring them into Space Command and show them all around everything. Let them be hands across the water and teach them about how to handle all of these things and show them. Maybe we should just give them a TR-3B or a TR-4 or even something bigger, one of our bigger ships. Just give that to them and they'll buy a little more of our jet. Is that what you want? Well, let me tell you something. All I know is the people that listen to this show, the American people, the people of the Lord Jesus, the people of America who believe in the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and they know in there in the Declaration of Independence, they know that it is their duty, it is their right, that after a long... Let me just read that. Let me read that because I'm going to tell you, Listen up out their tears. Before the angels even come, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce, to reduce the American people, to reduce us. When you guys got the design that you lie about, and you're buying three billion rounds, and you're hiring all these armed guards, and hut, hut, hut boys, and you're taking MRAPs, and put them into every town of 600 people or more, and doing all of this, and giving money to get ready to confiscate the weapons. You got a litmus test, and you're firing every admiral, every general, every colonel, every boat driver, every doggone line officer who does not swear allegiance to Barack Hussein, Obama, the abomination. You don't swear allegiance to him. You don't say, yeah, we're going to go ahead and confiscate weapons from American people under auspices. Yeah, we're going to subject them under NDAA and put them into concentration camps at the whim of the executive branch. If you do not swear allegiance, then you will go there. If you say anything bad, then you will go there. Well, let me tell you what. You know, Patrick Henry had a little saying, didn't he? As for me, he said, give me liberty or give me death. Now, I'll tell you what, don't welcome it. You can also pay attention to what George Patton had to say, that your job ain't to die for your country. Your job is to help hasten the enemy to die, okay? Hasten the enemy to die. And those are the serpents, the scorpions that the Lord has given you the authority to tread and to try it on. See that whatever a long train of abuses and usurpation pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not going to turn around just because you vote in some so-called conservative rhino, Republican. I had people that helped found the Republican Party long ago in my family who were from the Whigs. Well, let me tell you something. All of that's long gone. It's all gone. And every single person in these tops of the military now, all these top deals, half of them are queer or lesbian or they're Luciferian, or they're left-wing commies. I mean, my lands, the, the Pravda, I think it was Pravda, even came out with an editorial suggesting that the American people should never give up their guns. Pravda. They get it. I heard Alex Jones say today that if you evil ones. You think you're going to come and take the American people on and come for us? 
the American people are going to take you on, clean your clock. And he said, if you come for him and his family, I believe, just paraphrasing him, he said that they were, he, you didn't think that he was going to stack the bodies up in front of his house? When you come for him? Well, let me tell you something. Everybody out there, you load your magazines and get ready. You sharpen your K-bars. You get your Paul Chen Katana sharp. You get your Massetti sharp. You got your Bear Grill sporting knife or your kitchen knife. I don't care. You get it ready to go. And you get a good determination. You get a good steeliness in your back and your spine. And you say, I'm not going to take this crap anymore. I'm going to get ready for these jokers. And I'm going to be just like old Solzhenitsyn said. Remember what old Solzhenitsyn said, don't you? Oh, you don't. Maybe Hawkeye doesn't lighten you. Somebody who's new out there. You tears and how we burn in the camps later thinking what would things have been like if every security operative when he went out at night to make an arrest had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family or if during periods of mass arrests, as for example, in Leningrad, when they arrested a quarter of the entire city. People had not simply sat there in their lairs, paling with terror at every <laughs> bang of the downstairs door and at every <laughs> step on the staircase, but had understood that they had nothing left to lose and had boldly, boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush of a half a dozen people with axes, hammers, pokers, or whatever else was at hand. The organs would very quickly have suffered a shortage of officers and transport, and notwithstanding all of Stalin's thirst, the cursed machine would have ground to a halt if, if we didn't love freedom enough. And even more, we had no awareness of the real situation than we purely and simply deserved. Everything that happened after Alexander I. Solzhenitsyn. And you see, Truman had it to say, once a government is committed to the principle of silencing the voice of opposition, it has only one way to go, and that is down the path of in increasingly repressive measures until it becomes a source of terror to all its citizens and creates a country where everyone lives in fear. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. I've read to you before the domestic insurgency and declaration of martial law, 12 October 2008. They didn't want you to see it. It says so right here on some of the front. But they're talking about, they're saying here about what they're going to do to you and how they're going to cordon and search. And they also admit that foreign troops are going to be involved. Identify and depict those segments of the population that are friendly or unfriendly toward U.S. and multinational forces. Identify and depict those segments of the population that are pro-government or anti-government. Identify terrorists and our criminal elements and their relationship to the insurgents. The insurgents, ladies and gentlemen, will be anybody who doesn't swear allegiance to the Antichrist or to Barack Hussein Putinani or to uh, the devil or whatever, loose for himself. And that will be anybody who is uh, probably uh, a pro-constitutionalist, anybody who voted for Ron or Rand Paul, anybody who believes that uh, the Constitution and Bill of Rights are the supreme law of the land, anybody who believes that the Declaration of Independence was a good thing. Anybody who thinks that the health care bill that they're going to get charged for now and they can't afford to buy, and now they're going to get fined, you know, anybody who understands that if they have any of the criticism of any of this Obamacare or any of this stuff, that that would be grounds now under the mental health provisions that that's probably grounds for paranoia and that you have a mental health issue. You see, they're getting ready to come for you. You can look this up. 
Domestic Insurgency and the Declaration of Martial Law, 12 October 2008. Counterinsurgency responsibilities, the whole bit. And now you see next week, this could be the last time I'm on. I don't know. Because next week, we got Wednesday the 13th as Grid X2 begins. And I don't know if they're going to do anything. I don't know. But there has been some talk that it could go hot. And you see, when you corner uh, an animal, you corner somebody who's doing wrong, and you've got them in the corner, and if their poll rating starts to drop, and everybody starts to call them a liar, liar, pants on fire, and everybody starts to talk about them, then they can come on and they can apologize on TV. But you see, they really don't mean that apology. What that means is they need to kick in the Red Chinese. They need to kick in the Russian Spetsnaz troops that are inside America right now. They need to get the Al-Shababs and all that they allowed to acquire during the government shutdown, allegedly. They allowed the Al-Shababs and the Libyan Al-Qaeda to acquire, you see, the bad bio-nasties. And they've been training them, according to deep background sources. And then, you know, who is it that we're training at Fort Meade? Red Chinese military. And we're training them at the same time, NSA. NSA, you listening? Oh, I think you are. NSA, necrophiliac Shiite arses. Let me tell you something. You're training the Red Chinese in electronic warfare right in Fort Meade right now. And last week, their papers, their newspapers, had stories about how they were going to use nuclear weapons and nuke us on the West Coast, and they even published the maps of the radiation spread, and you're training them on electronic warfare. You're allowing them to come into the Hawaiian Islands. You're allowing them to land at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base about every other week or so. You're allowing them to go on down into Kentucky in units. And then after that, people that saw them down there get weird respiratory infections. Are you allowing them to spread things? Do you know what they're doing? Do you know what they do when they go home to the barracks at night? How many bugs have they placed in your facility in Fort Meade? How many little flies? How many of the little, you know, translucent or the transparent strips, the little piece of tape that have the little miniature nano stuff in it they can just put on the wall? How many of those have they put up since you've been training them there at NSA at Fort Meade? You people are traitors. The red Chinese are the enemy of the United States. They've taken all our jobs. We gave it to them, yeah. But they were allowed to take them. And you allowed the Illuminati to do so. The Luciferian Illuminati that you work for now. And our own Supreme Court, ladies and gentlemen, has ruled that you no longer have the right to remain silent. If you start talking at all to any police officer... Any federal agent, if you say anything at all, basically, I guess you've waived your right. And meanwhile, the Egyptians are smart. They've got it correct. They just charged the Joker Tut with crimes against humanity as an accessory to the Muslim Brotherhood violence in Egypt. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. And now, basically, you got Kerry threatening Israel with sanctions. And now we see and we found out that the Iranian, the sanctions against Iran were secretly lifted by the Joker Tut. Oh, he must want to bring on that 12th Imam, the Imam Mahdi, that old Almond Joy and the Coconuts used to talk about. And now you got the row, honey. You got the old row, honey, talks about it, you know, on the slide. Although the roll honey is just filled with nice honey. He's probably like them red Chinese that you just want to, old Locklear, you just want to be, you know, friendly with and just want to cozy up to him. Maybe it's because you find him exotic. I don't know. I don't know your persuasion. If you're like uh, little uh, Lord Fauntleroy with his little cavalry uniform there, old chairman of the Joint Chiefs, old song, Song singing, little uh, glee club type, Dempsey. Then you might be of the persuasion that you think them red Chinese boys are mighty handsome. I don't know. 
because you've gotten rid of anybody with any red blood, any Americanism, any kind of strong cojones, any kind of, you know, strength. You got rid of all those people. Down to the E3s, the E4s, you're even walking into their lives now. And if they don't swear allegiance, you're doing them. I've been telling you, ladies and gentlemen, for months, I've been telling you about the purges. Interesting that Solzhenitsyn mentioned Stalin, a communist, right? Interesting that he mentioned Stalin and a purge, because who is purging their own military? Who is purging the intelligence community? I've been telling you for years now about how they're killing the good intelligence agents, like Roland Carnaby. Friends of Roland Carnaby know exactly what I'm talking about. And now others have had to go into hiding, and others are on the lam, so to speak. Had to go bye-bye because they got hits out on them. You've had others have been compromised in numerous ways. False charges about this, false charges about that. You know, just tremendous number of people getting done, in a sense, either killed or or taken out and fired or or, you know, made and forced to retire or, you know, put up on charges of this or that or the other. But here's what I was going to tell you. Martial law playbook possibilities. This is how quickly it could all happen. Metropolitan big cities. Complete lockdown of all major traffic arteries as well as secondary roads. This includes air traffic, mass transit, rail and waterways. The citizenry will be instructed to remain inside and off the street. Each burg will be scheduled time to conduct daily activities on the street with all citizens being inside and on lockdown at a specific time. 99% of the population stays put under threat of aerial attack by drones. Suburban cities, all routes of travel described above on lockdown. Residents are rounded up by neighborhood and transported to a residential relocation center for tattooing or chipping and dowsing. 92 to 95% of all population complies due to lack of equivalent firepower. Small towns locked down within a half an hour. Relocation to follow in quick step. No threat of aerial drone attacks will be necessary. The tanks and MRAPs will be enough to scare the hell out of everyone in town. 85 to 90 percent of the population submits. Of the 10 to 15 percent that does not submit, only half make it out alive by evading the scene rather than mounting an immediate counter attack. Rural communities, pocket populations locked down within 15 to 20 minutes. Residential roundup and relocation within eight hours. No threat of aerial drone support coupled with the outdoor knowledge inherent in residents of these locales, results in 50 to 75% of the population being contained. Even with the main routes of travel blocked down, residents in rural communities know their surroundings intimately. They are in closer proximity to the uninhabited areas and know how to travel through them. 25 to 50% will make it to safety, taking with them guns and ammunition. Country residents, lockdown will be a voluntary or lazy nature. There will be plenty of forewarning before the U.N. troops show up in these locales or houses. The further off the beaten path, the better off you are. If you frequently get lost finding your way home, then do not ever move. Drone coverage will be consistent yet minimal to try and identify habitats where life exists. 100% of intelligence and mobile residents will survive if they choose to. Now, on the other hand, I will tell you, I disagree with some of that because I know that they've already pre-positioned Russian troops, probably red Chinese troops, Belgian troops, this troop, that troop, the other troop, East Bloc groups in various locales. We've seen them being put in back years ago when they were testing nets. There were British troops in Kansas already garrisoned in towns. There were British helicopter squadrons in Arizona. There were uh, all kind of foreign troops everywhere. We had up in Montana. Do you remember all the uh, the ones from the exotic places? And we had the, even the Singaporean Air Force. We had the Danish Air Force in Ohio. We had all kind of uh, Russians now, Fort Carson, and all over 
hood, you know, uh, brag, uh, you know, all over the place. We have the Dutch troops. We have all these people, all these foreign troops. And you all used to laugh about old Steve Quayle when he'd tell you there's hundreds of thousands of them. You'd laugh about old Hawk when he told you there was hundreds of thousands of them. And I haven't even told you about it. I even had got to fight with the doggone Russian tank officer. And now you don't laugh, do you? You don't laugh because it's right in the newspapers. Well, let me tell you something. The watchmen are still up giving you the word. You can heed the word or not. But I, for one, I'm going to tell you, I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to go and to be a minute man. One minute. You know, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever you can do. And to have the boots by the door. Have your fighting load by the door and your house load by the door as well. And harden and get ready to harden your place. And you better get ready. You better do so now. I don't know if it's the last time I'm on or not. Hopefully, I'll be back next Thursday night. Don't go into their Luciferian night without a fight, ladies and gentlemen. You got red Chinese and Russians in the wire. Good night to the old mighty men and women about her. I know you're up there. If you can make a difference, the Lord will allow you to use your high technology and take out and send a message to the red Chinese. Send a message to the Russians. Send a message to the Luciferian terrorists. The old Fandango, Fandango Rangers, wherever you may be. God bless you. I know you're ready. Biggie LaPua, you better be dialed in, brother. You better be on the watch. They'll be down your way, too. Don't go in there and lose your period now without a fight. Stand for the Lord Jesus. Stand for the Bill of Rights. Stand for your family.